going to look at mammon in the four square in the eyes and you will say to mammon you are not my god that thing is going to be under your feet and the glory of god is going to be just so strong upon your life that god will restore back in your life uh, everything that the devil have stolen from you uh, and God will multiply that back into your life uh, seven times uh, because there's a different anointing uh. no no he's not far away heaven is here I say heaven is amongst us say to your neighbor next to you say heaven is amongst us because you brought heaven and what does God say about heaven? He says, the, the, the heavens are filled with the glory of God. Come on, saints. I say heaven is filled with the glory of God. Uh, uh, Isaiah 40 verse 5 says, And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all humanity will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Come on. Come on, saints. It says heaven, it says the glory of the Lord will be revealed. What is happening in the month of April? The glory of God is revealed. Hallelujah. And when the glory of God is revealed, it says all humanity will see it together. So there must be, uh, I can almost say a, 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 a stirring within your heart, a curiosity in your heart for nothing else but to see the glory of God. You know, the devil wants you to see your, your trouble. He wants you to see your pain. He wants you to see your, your sickness. He wants you to see your, 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 your debt. He wants you to see all your limitations. He wants you to see everything that you cannot do. But God is saying, no, no, no. Look at my glory. Look at my glory because the verse preceding this, and please open your Bibles or your phone or wherever, because I want you to see this. Isaiah 40 verse 4. I want you to see this. Read it with me. Have you got it? Isaiah 40 verse 4. Have you got it? Read it with me. Read it out loud. Amen. So the word of God says, every valley shall be lifted up. So you're not in the valley. What do you do when the enemy tries to put you in a valley? The glory of God lifts up the valley. The glory of God doesn't just lift you up. The glory of God lifts up the valley. You don't come and tell me that you are in the doldrums, uh, you are down there, and you are under, and you are struggling. And No, 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 no. Lift up the valley. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, that is something else. There cannot be no valley. Because God has given you the glory, and what the glory does, it lifts up the valley. My God. Down the valley, up the mountain, Jerusalem. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It sounds nice. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Lift up the valley. Just sounds nice. <laughs> because the enemy wants you there. He wants you in the valley. Say, okay, uh, my, my darling, are you going to wake up this morning? Say, no, 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 man. I feel down. I feel down in the valley. Uh-uh. Come on, let us, let us release the glory of God. And when we release the glory of God, we raise the valley. We lift up the valley. And the word of God says, every mountain and every hill shall be made low. Cameron, low. Every valley shall be, every mountain shall be made Cameron didn't get that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every, every mountain and every hill shall be made. No. So you, you, don't, you don't have mountains. As long as Mr. Lowe is around you, there is no mountains. I say there are no mountains because every mountain shall be made. No. Hallelujah. See, the father-in-law can do that and preach that. <laughs> He can't come and stand here and say, every mountain shall be made Isaacs. 
And the word of God says, every uneven ground shall be made smooth. So when the glory of God comes, it is designed to change your reality. It is designed to change the narrative. It is designed to change your present day reality. You know, you're trying for months and months to come out of this mount, uh, out of this valley. You don't have to try to come out of this valley. Just activate the glory. Have you ever stood on a mountain and you look down and you look in the valleys and then suddenly there's a mist that is coming down, you know, over that, over that valley and you cannot see, you know, those crooked places anymore. It's almost as if that glory or that mist erases all of that. So momentarily, you know, when you look over that valley, you just see white. You just see, you know, uh, uh, the equilibrium that has come over that thing. And that is what the glory of God does. Uh, I don't care where you are today. I don't care what your situation is. Uh, I don't care how deep you have fallen. I don't care where you're standing right now. Any kind of sickness, disease, problem, uh, debt, uh, everything that the enemy has thrown against you. When the glory of God comes. It reveals, you know, God's power. And the word of God says, all uneven ground will, be, will become smooth and the rugged land will be plain. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. So what, what, what words does, it activates, it brings heaven into the earth. And this Psalm 97 verse 6 says, And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people shall see his glory. The heavens proclaim the righteousness of God, and all the people shall see God's glory. Amen? So it is time for the world to see the glory of God on, on your life. I say it is time for the world to see God's glory revealed in your life this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Luke chapter 3 verse 6 says, all humanity will see God's salvation. God's, God will bring you through. And the word of God says, every, every man will see the salvation of the Lord upon your life. Amen. So no matter how much hell the enemy tried to bring you in or tried to unleash upon your life, when you open your mouth, heaven comes. And when heaven comes, the fire will not burn you. When heaven comes, it brings a secure place in the midst of your trial. Sometimes you want to get out of the trial, but all we need to do is to activate God's glory inside of the trial. And God's glory will bring the transformation that we need to see by us just opening our mouth. Amen. Uh, Mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 18 says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. And in my name they will drive out demons and they will speak in new tongues. And they will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. And they will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. So this is the authority that God has given unto us against all systems. Snakes and scorpions, you know, it, 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 it speaks, about, it speaks about systems. It speaks about the power of darkness. It speaks about the enemy, the, the, that serpent himself. His head has been bruised. Amen? I say the head of the serpent has been bruised. And that's why we can take it up. And the word of God says it will not harm us because the, Jesus Christ dealt a serious blow to the enemy. The word of God says the seed, the seed of the woman will come and it will crush the head of the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the devil's head was crushed, heavens, uh, uh, you know, the word of God says that the veil of the temple was, was uh, uh, ripped in two and the glory of God literally was ushered into the earth. One more time. Remember the glory was behind the veil. Hallelujah. Now the glory of God has come through the veil. So everything that is here, you know, that was not lining up with God's will and God's purpose in the earth. You know, all the restrictions, all the limitations and everything, you know, that the enemy had against us. That glory will consume it. That glory will take care of it. Amen. 
Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27, he says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? There is nothing too difficult in the glory. Amen. It's the same Jeremiah that says, this glory, this power of God is like fire that is shut up in my bones. Could not resist it. Amen. And when that glory is upon your life, the word of God says nothing shall be too hard for you. Amen. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. It says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Because every word that comes out of the mouth of God has the glory of God. Hallelujah. It contains God's glory. It is a container of God's glory. Amen. Now, go with me to the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. God is speaking about you. I say God is speaking about you. Speaking about his church. Or he's speaking to his church. Or he speaks of his church. He says, to them God hath chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. Hallelujah. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We carry the hope of this world. I say we are carriers of hope. Well, sometimes people say, well, you know, I, I, I just hope everything is going to be okay. And they think that hope is far off. And hope is somewhere there. No, no, no. Hope is in you. And the word of God says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So, don't be the cause of your own delay. Because you are the carrier of the hope. Amen? Amen? Now, the, the word of God says, uh, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. There cannot be delays, saints. I say there cannot be delays. Because you are the carrier of the glory. Because Christ is in you. And the word of God says, he is the hope of glory. So you are carriers of that hope. And what people out there are looking for and are waiting for, they are waiting for this hope to be revealed. A mystery is something that is hidden. A mystery is something, you know, that is veiled. It is, it is it's not seen. So we need to unveil that glory in our lives. Amen? And how do we do it? Once again, let's go back to what God said. He says, we speak God's word. The thief, Satan, comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. In John 10, but Jesus Christ says, I have come so that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So the essence of what he wants to do and what God wants to reveal through you, he wants to reveal through you the mystery of the kingdom. And in this kingdom, saints, that you and I have received, you know, uh, the, the, the glory of God is what is driving everything in God's kingdom. I want to say that again. When he speaks about his glory... He says, uh, in the last days, says God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. What did Jesus say about our, our, about, about our dispensation and our times? He says, the works that I do, will you do also, and you will do greater works than these. Why? The reason for that is because of the greater glory that's going to come. We're not doing greater works because we are greater than Jesus. We are doing greater works because the glory is greater than in the latter house than what the glory has been in the former house. And the word of God says, and the glory of the Lord shall be like the waters cover the, the sea. So the earth will be covered in the glory of God. So the glory is not restricted to a place. The glory of God is not restricted to the four walls of the church. The word of God says, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Come on, saints. So when he says, the whole earth is filled with his glory, then it means our streets are filled with his glory. 
Means our homes are filled with His glory. Means our business premises are filled with His glory. Means that everywhere where we go, our cities, our towns, our regions, our nations, our continent, everywhere where we go is filled with God's glory. In dispensations gone by, you know, there was a restriction of God's glory. God's glory was not everywhere. God's glory was behind the veil. God's glory was contained in the ark. God's glory was contained, you know, in the priesthood. But right now, you and I have become the priesthood. Come on, saints. You are kings and priests. And what we are here to do this, this morning, saints, is we need to demonstrate God's glory in the earth. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4, it says, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with, in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings. And the word of God says, He has chosen us in Him before the creation of of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So this is not an afterthought. God have chosen you, you know, before the world began. Hallelujah. And what, is, what, he, what he has chosen us, he says, the word of God says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly realms. So, Note well, you've got access to every realm in the heavens. So the degree of the glory that is coming depends on which realm you are operating from. Come on, saints. So there, there, there needs to be a push. There needs to be a drive. Father, I thank you that I have access to this realm. Because the word of God says God has blessed us with all, every spiritual blessing in Christ in the heavenly realms. Amen? Now doesn't, that doesn't mean the opposite. That we are only going to access the blessings when we get to heaven. It means that we have access to those realms to bring what is in those realms and bring it into the earth. In the same way that you take supplies from a store. And you have the means to pay for it. You bring those supplies back to your house. You don't have to, every time when you're hungry, you go to the store. There is enough supplies in your home to deal with your needs. Hallelujah. So what God has given us, he's given us access to all spiritual blessings in heavenly realms. So that we can bring that glory in the earth. And that is your responsibility. Amen. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. To those that love it, you will eat its fruit. And Psalm uh, 59 verse 16 says, But I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in the times of trouble. And the last scripture I want to read is James chapter 5 verse 16. He says, Therefore confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, so that you might be healed. And 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, he says, Be alert, be sober mind, for your enemy the devil goes around like a roaring lion, looking for someone that he may devour. Amen? So, this, this thing that uh, we have access to, saints, it depends on us. The enemy doesn't have the power to devour. The word of God says he seeks those that he may devour. So make sure that you are covered in God's glory. Make sure that the glory of God is activated in the realms in which you operate. So there's no space for the enemy. There is no place for the enemy to come near you. Because God's glory is made manifest in your life in every area of your life. Amen. Jeremiah was so filled with God's glory. I, I, I mentioned the scripture earlier in Jeremiah 20 verse 9. He says, I will speak uh, uh, any more in his name and his word in my heart is like a fire shut up in my bones and I'm wary of holding it. Uh, indeed, I cannot. There was so much fire that he placed demand upon. And the word of God says uh, that it is like fire that is shut up in my bones. Uh, I just want you to see in the realms of the spirit saints uh, that glory that is upon you. When the enemy looks at you, he sees that glory like fire shut up in your being. 
So wherever you go, you know the enemy cannot come near you. He cannot destroy you because you unlocking within your life uh, the glory of God. You are bringing heaven in your terrain. I say you are bringing heaven in your territory. You are bringing hell, heaven in your domain. Wherever you are operating, wherever God has deployed you, wherever God has released you, the glory of God shall be seen in your life. Hallelujah. And God promised us in his word. He says, the word of God that has gone forth out of the mouth of God, it shall not return void. It shall not return empty unto him, but it shall accomplish the thing that pleases my God. Hallelujah. Because there is growth in the glory. There is manifestation in the glory. There is power in the glory. You know, we see God doing great and mighty things in the glory. We see how things manifest in God's glory. We see how creation has come as a result of God's glory. Remember there was this um, place that I can almost say Jeremiah or uh, Ezekiel stumbled upon. It was a valley of dry bones. And when God's glory went over that, over that region, you know, every bone that was there, it was just a valley of dry bones. But, you know, the, say, the, the saying goes, where he asked God, he says, uh, God asked him, son of man, can these dry bones live? And it was the glory of God that brought resurrection it was the glory of God that changed and transformed, you know, that, that realm. Or it was the glory of God that took a valley filled with dry bones and he raised up an army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every form of resistance against your life, every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness that have, uh, you know, come up against your life, God's glory shall be revealed in the season in your life. I say God's glory shall be revealed in the season. Amen. Let's quickly look at this. He says, when you open your mouth by the Spirit of God, it is not you that are speaking. It is God that speaks through you. Because the enemy hear the voice of God through the glory. Hallelujah. So wherever you go, you literally activate and you bring heaven in that territory, in that region. And let heaven contend with your adversaries. I say let heaven contend with your enemies. Let heaven contend with your opposition. Let heaven contend with those that come up against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And every situation will be turned around because of the glory of God. Hallelujah. When you open up your mouth, demons tremble. I say when you open your mouth, demons tremble. The word of God says every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. You know, when, when, when the glory shows up, finances is released. When the glory of God shows up, healing is released. When the glory of God shows up, saints, uh, you know, every adverse situation is turned around. When the glory of God shows up, every door that is shut opens up. When the glory of God, oh, when the glory of God is revealed, uh, God makes a way where it seems there is no way. I say when the glory of God is revealed, uh, God releases keys in the glory. Remember, when the glory of God came on, upon Peter, he says, flesh and blood have not revealed unto, uh, this unto you, but my father which is in heaven so he says i give unto you the keys of the kingdom it's in the revelation of glory that god released keys in your life oh you don't hear me this morning saints. peter was with like all the other disciples he was there with them hallelujah and then he, and then when when the glory of god showed up peter received the revelation and Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. He says, behold, I give unto you keys. Where did he receive the keys? He received the keys in the, revel in the revelation of God's glory by the Spirit of God. And when he received those keys, the Word of God says, whatever you bind upon the earth shall be bound in the heavens. 
So don't underestimate the glory. There is a master key in the glory. I say there is a master key in the glory. And that key will open any door. Doesn't matter what doors are you facing right now. I declare over your lives this day, saints, what a, doesn't matter what door, you know, is shut against your life. Uh, in the glory of God, doors are going to open. I say in the glory of God, new doors are opening in your life. In the glory of God, new opportunities are opening in your life. In the glory of God. Remember the glory of God was so, so great. Uh, you know, when, the, when Jesus Christ took the, the disciples on the mount of transfiguration, uh, the glory of God showed up. And the glory showed up. He says, Lord, can, can we not build ourselves tents uh, and stay in this glory? Come on. When the glory of God shows up, there is an open heaven. Jesus is in the wilderness. Fasted for 40 days. Comes from the wilderness. Then what happens was, the glory of God drops upon his life. When, he's, when he steps out of the Jordan. And then the heavens open. And then the father says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Remember Jesus did not even die. But then the glory opened up the heavens. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, the veil was rent in two. The disciples go and they sit in the upper room. And then the glory of God began to fill the place where they were together. When the glory filled the place, uh, you know, uh, where they were gathering, the word of God says none of them had any needs. Because of the glory of God. And from there onwards, in spite of the persecution, in spite of the attacks upon their lives, uh, in spite of everything that happened during their te tenure and their time, you know, I'm not talking about uh, uh, persecution where they say, uh, you know, the churches cannot gather. I'm talking about a persecution. If you gather, you die. But in spite of that, the word of God says that God added daily to the church such as should be saved. The word of God says, there were no lack amongst them. Because the glory was upon them. Now that is the early church. The word of God says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. In this glory, saints, these guys, they could, they, can, they, could, they could bring a sacrifice before God. And they could lay their possessions down at the apostles' feet. Come on. Those in that glory, they didn't bring 100 rand or 50 rand. No, no. In that glory, they begin to give houses. I decree that we are coming to a day in our lives that we're going to have so much because of God's glory in our lives that we will come here and stand here in church on a Sunday morning and ask, is there anyone here that doesn't have a house? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about ordinary believers. They will come and say, Apostle, today I want to bless somebody with a house. Because of God's glory. There's going to be people here in this place that will say, Apostle, I came here. There's an extra car outside. If there's anyone here that have been praying and believing God and trusting God for a car, I want to hand over the keys. I want to hand over the paperwork because of the glory of God that has been upon my life. It has been prophesied. It has been decreed. It has been declared upon my life. And now I see the multiplication. And now I begin to see, you know, the expansion upon my life uh, and the glory of God will make you fearless come on you will pay people's university fees uh, because the glory of God that is going to be upon your life uh, it's going to make you fearless going to look at mammon in the four square in the eyes uh, and you will say to mammon you are not my God that thing is going to be under your feet and the glory of God is going to be just so strong upon your life that God will restore back in your life everything that the devil has stolen from you and God will multiply that back into your life seven times because there's a different anointing. There is a, I'm not just talking about the anointing saints that breaks the yoke. Remember, you know, what happens uh, when the anointing of God comes upon you. It's like this, uh, this, this, 
the, the, this uh, a cattle or, 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 or ox, you know, that, that carries a yoke. And, and the yoke doesn't break because, uh, you know, of just a little bit of anointing that is, that is, that is placed upon his forehead. No, the neck of that, of that thing grows so fat <laughs> that, the, that, that the yoke is destroyed. That the yoke breaks. There's going to be so much. I'm not talking about oil. There's going to be so much glory upon your life. That your neck is going to grow so strong. That every burden upon you is going to be broken. You've been carrying that burden. I say Melissa you've been carrying that burden. But just stay in the glory. Just stay in the anointing. And just allow the anointing to grow from within. And I tell you, in no time, you're going to see the glory of God is going to be so strong that it will break that yoke. I say the glory of God is going to deal with your burdens. The glory of God will deal with your fears. The glory of God will deal with the attacks of the enemy upon your life. I say the glory of God is going to deal with that thing. All you have to do is just stay in the glory. Revel in the glory. Praise God in the glory. Speak in the glory. Uh, you know, just shout in the glory. Uh, make your confessions in the glory. And that glory is going to grow so thick that you just see go, that that yoke is destroyed. That yoke is broken. That yoke is broken because of the glory. Hallelujah. You've been around. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, say, you've been around. You say, you've been carrying this thing. You've been carrying this burden. And the devil thought that that yoke is permanent. That that burden is permanent. You've been tolerating the sickness. You've been tolerating the fear. You have been tolerating not having enough. You have been tolerating. But I want to declare today to every principality and every power, there is a yoke that will be destroyed because of the anointing that is growing. Hallelujah. And when this glory grows upon your life. Hallelujah. Dear, it will, it will activate heaven's anointing. Maybe see the saints. I say it will activate heaven's anointing and it will break every yoke. I say you've been tolerating this thing. I say you've been there and you've been walking this walk. And you've been faithful. And you have been striving. And you say, Lord God, when? God says, no, no, my glory is showing up. I say, my glory is showing up. And right now, that glory might be ankle deep. Right now, that glory might be knee deep. But right now, that glory might be just a waist high. But the time is coming where that glory is going to be so overwhelming that you're going to swim in the glory. I say, you are going to swim in the glory. You're going to rise in the glory. I say, you're going to go higher in the glory. I say you are going to be seated in Christ Jesus in the glory and that glory is going to be so much that no demon will be able to stand. Hallelujah. Be careful where you walk. I say be careful where you walk because some of you are going to push your trolley in spa, in spa and there's going to be so much glory and so much anointing and people will fall out next to you. People will cry out next to you. Demon spirits will begin to manifest next to you because there's going to be so much glory upon your life. You're going to walk in by your, by your workplace and those that have been dealing and dabbling witchcraft against you and those that have been going to Sangomas, you know, and doing all kinds of rituals and things, thinking that they are bringing you down. You're going to step into that office and there's going to be so much glory in that house. I tell you those demons are going to be, begin to cry out. I say those demons are going to be begin to shout out uh, and they were going to say God help me and you're going to wonder what is happening now I've been working with this colleague for such a long time I didn't know what is happening here around me and they will cry out and they will repent uh, because they will de begin to recognize uh, the glory that is upon your life yeah. hallelujah 
Whenever you speak, your words are filled with his glory. I say wherever you stand, your, there's, there's a weight on your life and it's not a weight of a heavy burden. Don't confuse the anointing with burdens. Come on. Sometimes all of a sudden you don't know what is this. What is this weight upon my life? And let me just say this, that weight that is upon your life, Malaysia, is in direct opposition with principalities and powers. And sometimes you feel, man, I cannot carry this burden any longer. I cannot, I cannot deal with this thing any longer. No, 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 don't give up. I say don't give up. Because the glory and because of the anointing that is upon you. Come on. I say the glory that the anointing is in direct opposition. Brian X, can you just stand? Quickly, quickly stand. Raise your hands. I say the anointing that is upon your life is in direct opposition with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that wants to destroy you. But they will not succeed. I say they will not succeed. And the reason why they will not succeed is because of the glory that you carry. It's because of the anointing that you carry. It's because of the power that you carry. You can sit down. So the word of God says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No tongue that is raised shall stand. You will not be afraid of them. Because you are walking in the glory. You will not be afraid of them because you are covered in the glory. Even if they pull out a gun and shoot you, the bullet will not penetrate because it will just drop because of the anointing. Uh, even if they try to, 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 to plot, to assassinate you, to take you out, uh, it's not going to succeed because the glory of God is so strong upon your life. Who do they think they are? I say, who do they think they are? The word of God says, if you take up serpents, if you trample upon scorpions, if you drink any deadly thing, Marlon, it shall not destroy you. Shall not destroy you. Come on. Because of the glory. I say, because of the glory. Lift up both your hands, everyone, everyone in this place. And I want you to say, I'm covered in his glory. Say, I'm covered in the glory. Come on everywhere, say, I'm covered in the glory. Say, wherever I go, I'm covered in the glory. Say, I'm covered by heaven's assurance. I am covered, I'm guaranteed. I am guaranteed by heaven this morning. Say, the anointing is my guarantee. Say, the anointing is my covering. Say, the glory is my covering. Say, the glory is my covering. Come on, lift up your voice and say it. Say, the glory is my my covering. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift up your hands one more time. I want you to, to, to pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I lift up my city. I lift up this region. I lift up every street. I lift up every highway. I lift up the, the, the N6. I lift up the R36. I lift up every, every national road. Father, cover these roads with your glory. Cover these roads with your glory. Cover this city with your glory. Cover the surrounding areas with your glory. And every evil that are rising in these territories I decree that the glory of this house the glory of my house the glory come on put your hands right here say the glory of this temple is going to flow into all these streets into all these roads into all these territories and it will bring the fear of God back into this region in Jesus name come on saints let's give the Lord a hand of praise you may be seated come on saints people will run in terror because angels show up in the glory I say people will run in terror 
Because angels show up in glory. Wherever the glory of God drops, wherever the glory of God falls, angels, uh, you know, will, will show up in that territory. Angels will show up. Wherever God's glory comes, wherever God's glory is revealed, angels show up in that territory. Come on. You know, on the resurrection Sunday, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the Bible says, before Mary and, uh, you know, the women came to the, to the tomb. The stone was stolen in front of, of, the, of, the, of the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word of God says, when the gods looked up, they saw uh, a manifestation of an angel uh, that showed up in that glory of the resurrection. And the word of God says uh, that this thing was as white as snow. Just shows up. And, and the word of God says they could not stand in the glory. And they fell down as a result of the glory. And the stone was rolled away and Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. And when, the, when Mary came uh, and they look, came to look for Jesus, the tomb was empty. Because of the manifestation of that heavenly angelic being that came during Resurrection Sunday in the glory of his resurrection. Angels will show up in the glory. So when the glory of God manifests in your life, angels are going to show up in the glory. I say suddenly they will see what you might not see. And they will run in terror. They will flee in haste. Because when the, the word of God says when the devil comes to you or the enemy comes to you in one direction, he will flee in seven different directions. Why? It's because of that, of that angelic being and that angelic forces that are there that shows up in the glory. It's time for us to place a demand on the glory. Amen? When trouble comes, we want to press the panic button. When trouble comes, we want to call the police. But it is time to call on the glory. <laughs> Gabriel said, press the glory button. When trouble comes, call on his glory. Let the glory of God show up. And let the devil see what happens in the glory. Angels manifest in their glory. If God is going to raise up an army in that glory, he will raise up an army in their glory. But I say one angel is enough to destroy 10,000. One angel is enough. Hallelujah. When they, when, they, when they rise up against you, the glory of God is going to show up. The glory of God is going to reveal. So no witchcraft, no principality, no power, no para. I say no para. Can stand in the glory. They will bow their knees and they will get saved. It's amazing how much we put emphasis on paras. No, 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 no. When they, when they open your gate, they will see the glory. They will turn around and say, I, I, can't, I can't enter here. There is something here. There is some fire here. There is some glory here that I, you know, uh, 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 what's this thing? A Satanist came to me and asked me, why is there fire around your house? She came, knocked on my door, opened the door. She says, we, we tried for the last few months to enter into your premises. We still stayed at the mountain. For the last few months, we tried to come in, but we can't. Because every time when we come, there is a fire around your house. And she says, please come to my house. So I went to her house. And I went to her house. She took out all her black clothes. And she says, burn out these clothes. And we burned out those clothes. Everything that she had on for her rituals and for her stuff. Because she could not enter. They could not penetrate. 
So they recognize there is a power that we have that is greater than the power that they have. Come on, saints. Every time when they try to come, they find around the fence. Remember, we didn't have a, a front wall in front of our house. Our house was open. It was like an open area, landscaping. That's, what, that's all that was there, the tree. And they, they walked, but when they walked, they find that they, they can't pass the boundary. They can't pass the boundary at the back. They can't jump over the wall at the back. And I ask, why can't you come in? They say, no, no. There's a fire around your house. That's the glory of God. I say that is the glory of God. So wherever you go, that fire surrounds you. I say that fire surrounds you. Wherever you park your car, that fire surrounds you. They are, they are not going to steal your tires. They are not going to access your, your, your place. They, 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 will not, they will not clone your cards. They will not mess with you at the ATM. Wherever you go, the glory of God is going to cover you. Come on. Somebody came. I was walking down Cathcart Road. And the glory of God came over my life. And, uh, and the Lord said to the... This mic needs glory. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, it was Pastor Andrew before he was saved. And the Lord said to him, follow him. He followed me into the building. I was still working at Sanlam. And he did this the whole time. He did this. He says, what is this thing that is on you? I said, what? He says, no, what is this thing that is on you? He said, he says, I, when I saw this thing, I followed you. And that day he got saved. Because of the glory. Let me just say, saints, there are things in the realms of the spirit that principalities and powers see upon your life that they cannot touch you. They cannot come close to you. They will not come near you. They will not come near your family. They will not come near your belongings. They will not come near what is yours, what is rightfully the, yours. But the time has come now for you to activate heaven and bring out of heaven the hidden riches, the hidden treasures that God has. Bring it out of that heavenly realm and bring it into the earthly realm. Bring it into this realm. And what, what, what happens is the glory accommodates that. The glory of God makes room for that. The glory of God can establish you. I say the glory of God will establish you. The glory of God will bring out to you what God always had reserved for you. Hallelujah. I say the glory of God will bring to you what God always reserved for you. Amen. 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 Those of you that are not married this morning, I want you to stretch forth your hands into the glory. And say, Father, I thank you for Mr. Wright. Thank you for Mrs. Wright. I bring her out of the glory. I say, I bring him out of the glory. Let them manifest in my life. Say, Father, I thank you for my house. Bring my house out of the glory. Thank you for my home. I'm bringing my home out of the glory. Say, Father, I thank you for my divine protection. I'm bringing it out of the glory. Father, I thank you for your riches. I'm bringing it out of the glory into manifestation in my life. I thank you for overflow. Say, I thank you for overflow. Come on, stand saying, Say, I thank you for overflow. I bring overflow out of the glory. Come on, those of you that are watching by Facebook Live, say, I bring overflow out of the glory and it manifests in my home. I bring prosperity out of the glory and it manifests in my life. I bring healing out of the glory. And I thank you that your healing manifests in my life. I bring the abundance of God out of the glory and it manifests in my life. I bring the supernatural out of the glory and it manifests in my life. I bring what God promised unto me. All the promises of God, I bring it out of the glory 
and it manifests in my life. I bring visions and I bring dreams out of the glory and it manifests in my life. I bring the wealth of the sinners out of the glory and it manifests in my life. I bring right now every yoke, everything that have risen against me, I bring it out of the glory and God's glory begins to destroy every handwriting, every ordinance that is against me. He destroys it right now because of the glory. I bring out of the glory every answer to my prayers. It manifests in the earth. It manifests in this dimension. I see it. I see it. It's coming to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are today, in whatever city, whatever town you find yourself in this morning, the glory of God is going to come into your home. The glory of God is coming into your territory. I say the glory of God is going to come to wherever you are and it's going to bring the change and the transformation that you so much desire. The glory of God is going to break the yokes of bondage over your children, over every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness in your life. I say that glory. I say that glory is bringing change. It's bringing transformation in the nations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on saints, lift up your voice and thank God for His glory. Thank God for His glory. Thank God for the month of glory. Thank God for the month of glory and the manifestation of glory. I don't hear you this morning. I want you to shout like somebody in this place. Wait, 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 wait. You know, at the count of three, I want you to shout and I want you, let's just see God's glory manifesting in every area of your life, saints. There is not one area in your life. You know, sometimes we in church, we, we experience God's glory. We go out of church and we go to our homes and it's almost as if all hell breaks loose. We're not leaving this glory here. We're taking that glory to our homes. I say we're taking that glory to our business. We're taking the glory wherever we go. We're taking it to our schools. We are taking it to you. University, we say the glory of God goes ahead of me. So right now at the count of three, I want you to thank God for His glory in every area of your life. One, two, three. Come on, give God a mighty shout. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord, for your glory. Hallelujah. His glory is sovereign and His glory reigns supreme. Say to your neighbor next to you, say His glory is sovereign and His glory reigns supreme. Say His glory is sovereign and His glory reigns supreme. Hallelujah. What does that mean? No one can interfere. What it means, no one can intercept. What it means that no one has a say over God's glory. Sometimes the enemy wants to confuse you. And you go back home. And you go back in normality. And you say, now what? What's happening now? When that, when that thought comes... I just want you to say two things. Say His glory is sovereign. And His glory is supreme. Just say those two things. Whenever the devil comes and brings doubt in your mind and tell you it's not going to happen, it's not for you, it's for somebody else, uh, you, you know, you, you're not worthy, you don't qualify, it's not going to happen, just say. just say his glory is sovereign at home you say his glory is sovereign and his glory is supreme his glory reigns supreme his glory is sovereign and his glory reigns supreme there's nothing the enemy can do to reverse that hallelujah hallelujah